<laughs> and welcome back to part two of episode 112. What'd you say? Tie all the pretty colors together? The Bowfront Cabinet Guy. <laughs> That's right, quite the jokester. All right, got the camera out again. This is my first opportunity. This isn't tanked. We're already being a bunch of jokesters. Oh, no, not at all. To work side by side with Jim Sandifer. You gotta have fun while you work. Of course, I'd have a lot more fun if you feed me every once in a while. Oh, God. Of Sandifer Construction. Uh, granola bars out in the van. And granola bars. You know, keeps me locked up in the basement. He's my cabinet guy who builds my jelly aquarium cabinet. Uh, essentially, what we're doing is we're replacing the electrical. I'm gonna put new receptacles in because you know that these have been. In fact, these are really cheap receptacles. These are this is 14 year old stuff. <laughs> I'm already used 20 amp. A little more expensive. Uh, a little harder to plug in and out of. This was put in before plug. the previous okay. aquarium was built. And uh, I only brought two. Jim only told me there was two. Isn't that right, Jim? Yeah, he paid just as much attention to the electrical oh. outlets as he did the stain on the stand. Oh, no, that I did pay attention to. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Always pay attention to that. Although I gotta tell you, all right. So I, need I some think tools somewhere along the line, again with the camera, someone might have misinterpreted. Back up. Back up. The stain in the stand. But we'll find out later on today. So having decided and discussed the reason to replace the electrical outlets, we'll go ahead and get that taken care of now, so we can slide the stand into place afterwards. And what we're going to do is remove these temporarily so we can slide the cabinet up and cut the baseboard, mark it, scribe it, and we slide the cabinet up. And then we can measure from our mark, find out exactly where these are, transfer that to the cabinet, and uh, then we can cut our holes. And I think I'll let Jim do something besides run the camera again. Maybe cut some holes in the wood. Watch him panic. Maybe I should run the camera for a change. Oh yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. Didn't realize there was that much drama putting electrical drama. outlets in there. I mean, we should oh. probably put this on a a a, a an um. A pet channel aquarium uh, reality episode or something. Yeah. Especially with all the joking going on. Oh, yes. Well, you gotta have fun. If you don't have fun, forget it. What's the point? Okay. So, with the Bowfront Aquarium Stand right. Cabinet Maker right. Guy so finally wood, finishing with the electrical, we, we can go ahead and slide the stand measure. up against the wall so we can determine where we have to make the cutouts for the electrical to pass into the stand itself. And that's pretty much it. Ready? Okay, so you tell me where you want to bring it. You know, as in how it's going to be centered inside. Yeah, where, do you, where would you like it? Well, I tell you, my first thought is it should probably end up being... About center square there? Yeah, or right, otherwise it's going to look way off. Turns out the marble tiles on the floor are the most obvious or visual reference in the room. So I'm going to make sure that the stand lines up with the lines in the marble tiles. And with the stand now aligned with the lines in the marble floor, we want to step back for a moment and look at the imprint of the old aquarium on the wall just to make sure that the stand will cover that up once we put it and the tank in place. This is the chiller side. Correct. That's, that's going to be exiting here, so we're going to push and pull. So you're doing what? You're marking the... Uh, Molding around the uh, the base molding around the wall so we can notch it out so the uh, Cabinet or the stand fits against the wall snugly. That's correct. And then we can screw the stand against the wall And we're not going to level the actual stand We're going to level the deck that sits on top of here and then the fish tank sits on top of that Okay, and we'll make our marks and then slide the stand back okay. away from the wall So anyways, if you look see the how it goes down below the floor they laid this and then, well, first the baseboard was in, and then you put the floor in. So 
So what I'm going to do is cut here without hitting the wall, without hitting the floor. And then I'll take a cross cut and do it here. And then I can snap this off and then the cabinet can go right against the wall. Jim is using a handheld reciprocating saw. This will allow him to do a horizontal as well as a vertical cut at the depths that he wants. We can cut out that piece of molding very easily and quickly. Make it a snap now. There we go. Voila. And look at that. Cabinet will fit right in there. And with the molding on the left yeah, side of the sides. aquarium stand It'll cut out, up. we'll go ahead and move over to the right hand side. Caulking, painting. Did you see what happened at the recent Marine Aquarium Expo in Costa Mesa, California? YouTube's own Mr. Saltwater Tank and the LA Fish Guy bumped into each other. Actually, Mark Callahan did an interview with Jim Stein. We had a good time dodging the attendees in the aisle, and just as we got started, a wave of interested hobbyists gazed in awe at the mini jelly aquarium display set up in the booth. It was great to meet Mark, and if you have not yet, make sure to check out Mr. Saltwater Tank on YouTube. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. So having positioned and centered the aquarium stand against the wall and then notched the molding that surrounds the rim around the floor so that it will accommodate the stand itself, we're now measuring from those notch points to where the electrical outlets are located. Jim will then transfer those dimensions to the back side of the stand where he then can take and cut out some holes in the back of the stand to, that will match or accommodate the outlets in the wall. Nine, twelve and a half. Sixty-one and three quarters. That's where I screwed up. I did sixty-three and three quarters. Sixty-one and three quarters. That looks more like it. And then I can just double check it. Four inch box. It's a four by four. It's a four S box. And with his measurements verified, he'll use a level to mark the horizontal lines as well as his vertical lines. And then after this, we'll screw it to the wall, we'll set the deck on it, and I'll uh, put the doors on it. And uh, hopefully the tank shows up soon, huh? Yeah. Because I'm hungry. And now Jim's using a handheld router, not only to bore the starting holes, but to cut out those squared holes that will accommodate the electrical outlets. Again, with the camera, I will let you know that if you get too close to the rotozip, it will affect your camera. Literally. Okay. <laughs>
Oh, come on, really? <laughs> and with the first hole cut out so easily, we'll go ahead and do the second hole just as quickly. I'm supposed to wear safety goggles. But I can't see because I'm an old guy. So don't make fun of the old guy. And the cut doesn't have to be critical because it gets covered by a plate. So it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And that's why the old Bowfront Aquarium Cabinet Guy used a level to draw the horizontal and vertical lines. You want to see what I'm writing on the rest of that. <laughs> so do you think my Bowfront Cabinet Guy is just a little kooky? Or maybe just a few elements short in his water chemistry. Blew all that sawdust know, over here. Saw too, Be sure to come on back for part three as we slide the stand into position and find out if the homeowner will accept the pink stain on the stand.